fellow Ghanaians, good evening. I came into your homes on 17th January to give an account of our COVID-19 situation, a situation which per available data at the time was not good. To this end, I appeal to you, my fellow Ghanaians, to help contain the spread of the virus by respecting the protocols government had put in place. The hope was that we would begin to see an improvement in our case count as a result. Two weeks on from that address, the situation is even worse. As of Friday, 29th January, 64 more people have sadly died over the last two weeks, bringing the total number of confirmed deaths to 416. Our hospitalization rates are increasing, with the number of critically ill and severely ill persons now at 172. Our hospitals have become full, and we have had to reactivate our isolation centers. Our average daily rates of infection now stand at 700, compared to 200 two weeks ago. The total number of active cases has more than doubled from a little over 1,900 two weeks ago to 5,358 currently. When I delivered update number 22, 13 out of the 16 regions had recorded active cases. Today, all 16 regions have active cases. Indeed, Greater Accra, Central, Western, Ashanti, Eastern, Upper East, Upper West, Volta, and Northern regions are the hardest hit, accounting for 94% of the total number of active cases. In effect, fellow Ghanaians, we have a lot of work to do in coming to grips with the disease. Given that recent studies show that the UK and other new variants are being transmitted within the population, we should all understand that our current situation could get very dire if efforts are not made, both on the part of government and by you, the citizenry, to help contain the virus. The analysis continues to tell us that the spread of the virus mostly occurs in indoor confined spaces with poor ventilation, where people are talking, singing, or shouting without their masks. The imposition of restrictions on our daily routines helped in reducing the prevalence of the pandemic in the country. And government has been left with no option but to reintroduce some of these restrictions in order to help save the situation. I know these measures in the recent past were unpleasant, but over a period, they resulted in a favorable situation for the country. We have to return to them. So fellow Ghanaians, until further notice, funerals, weddings, concerts, theatrical performance and parties are banned. Private burials, with no more than 25 people can take place with the enforcement of the social distancing, hygiene, and mask wearing protocols. Beaches, nightclubs, cinemas, and pubs continue to be shut. Our borders by land and sea remain closed. All workplaces, public and private, must employ a shift system for workers in addition to the use of virtual platforms for business or work. Conferences and workshops can take place with all the appropriate protocols. However, I encourage the use of virtual platforms for such engagements. Restaurants should provide takeaway services and should as much as possible avoid seated services. The National Sports Authority and the Ghana Football Association should ensure compliance 
with a 25% capacity rule in our stadia, with spectators respecting the social distancing rule and wearing of masks. To the revered leaders of our religious organizations, that is our churches and mosques, I entreat you to enforce to the letter the protocols rela relating to attendance, i.e. the two-hour duration, one meter social distancing, mask wearing, use of sanitizers, and the presence of Veronica buckets, liquid soaps, and rolls of tissue paper. I know that since the reopening of our schools two weeks ago, we have witnessed only few reports of cases among students. I appeal to school authorities and teachers to enforce the guidelines provided by the Ghana Education Service, and I urge the Ghana Health Service to continue their surveillance at the schools so we can contain any reported cases. As we step up public education and enforcement of the protocols and public gatherings, let me also state the regulatory agencies will undertake random checks to ensure conformity with these rules, and the security services will be tasked to enforce them. You do not have to be arrested by the police before you wear your mask. Your workplace should not be closed for nonconformity with the protocols. If there's no urgent reason for you to be outside, please stay at home. Each one of us can help to contain the spread if we continue to practice the measures of social distancing, washing our hands with soap under running water, refraining from shaking hands, and wearing our masks whenever we leave our homes. These measures must be respected by all. I urge you, my fellow Ghanaians, to, com to continue to pay attention to your health improve your fitness levels, and eat our local foods that boost your immunity. Should you at any time feel unwell or exhibit the most common symptoms of COVID-19, such as fever, dry cough, tiredness, please report to the nearest health facility and get tested. COVID-19 tests are free for all Ghanaians at public health institutions. If a Ghanaian citizen returns a positive result, the cost of care and isolation and treatment centers will be borne by government. At the 58th summit of the authority of ECOWAS heads of state and government, held virtually, it was agreed that the cost of the COVID test for inbound ECOWAS nationals be pegged at 50 United States dollars at the Kutuka International Airport. The cost of the tests for non ECOWAS nationals still remains 150 United States dollars. ECOWAS nationals and travelers who test positive will bear the cost of the mandatory isolation and treatment. Ghanaian nationals, however, who test positive upon their arrival into the country, will have their isolation and treatment costs borne by the state. Fellow Ghanaians, in update number 21, I indicated that Ghana is set to procure her first consignment of the COVID-19 vaccines within the first half of this year. Since then, a lot of work has been done towards the realization of this. Our aim is to vaccinate the entire population with an initial target of 20 million people. Through bilateral and multilateral means, we're hopeful that by the end of June, a total of 17,600,000 vaccine doses would have been procured for the Ghanaian people. The earliest vaccine will be in the country by March. The Food and Drugs Authority, FDA, will use its established processes for granting emergency use authorization for each vaccine in Ghana. As President of the Republic, I assure you 
that only vaccines that have been evaluated and declared as safe for use in Ghana will be administered. Government will continue to monitor our COVID-19 situation and will remain resolved in ensuring that we are able to return to normal daily routines. I remain hopeful that if each one of us embraces fully the safety protocol, and we continue to put our faith in the Almighty, we will emerge strongly from this pandemic. And we are if you bra minimo kasaya no, na ochi mi yununi ye, ya yu yunu e yi huba, fa ne efe nipa, misramo, mo bi anfa ya yu yunu indi agro. Mundi si se yunu so, ni titi yu, mo se mas no, en no, en ebe boye. Nyamime, oti e nyone, ni kenya vye. Hela, e fe gbe ye, e ke men ya wa, ni panyo fay, moko ke hela akashwe. Nye yi amlano, ni titiru, masu uwe, no ba wawo. My faith in God tells me that this too shall pass, for the battle is the Lord. May God bless us all in our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention, and good night.